Good morning, everybody. Welcome to New Walk Church. We are so excited to have y'all with us today. Would you stand up as we sing together this morning? Every 
voices as the heavens cry to be a response. All creation shouts with the voice of triumph to declare the reign of the Lord our God. Let's put our hands together. Sing it out. He shall reign. He shall reign forever. Strongholds now surrender for the Lord. Our God has overcome. Who can be against us? Jesus, our defender. Welcome to New Walk Church. Whether you're joining us online or here in person, we are so glad that you're spending part of your day with us. My name's Cami. As you can see, we have an amazing worship team, but that's just the beginning. In a minute, one of our pastors will come out to share the message with you that you can apply throughout the week. As you walked in, you should have been given some message notes. These are a great way to follow along and refer back to. If you didn't get them, raise your hand and we'll get some to you right away. Inside those message notes is something we call a connect card. It's important for everyone to fill out as much information as you feel comfortable sharing. Be sure to drop it in the blue bucket that will be passed during offering at the end of the worship experience. Now, if this is your first time visiting New Walk, we consider you a VIP. We have a small gift that we wanna give you as a token of our appreciation for visiting with us. You'll need to take your Connect card with you as you leave and stop by our VIP table, which is located outside the main entrance under the big blue awning. We are so excited that you're here and we want you to know that your past will never define your future. No matter who you are or where you've been, we're glad that you're here with us. If you have kids with you, we wanna let you know that we have a fantastic kids program happening throughout the entire experience. It's safe, it's secure, and most importantly, it will be the best day of their week. Our children's ministry is fun and engaging with a message that is delivered at their level. There's still time to check them in, so get there now. 
Thanks so much for being here with us this weekend at New Walk. We believe that you're here for a reason and that God has something he wants to say to you wherever you're at. Our hope is that you leave today encouraged and closer to him than ever before. Be sure to stay connected with us on social media at My New Walk Church to stay up to date on everything that's happening here at New Walk. We hope that you and your family have a great weekend. And once again, thank you for joining us today. Welcome home. Hey, New Walk Church, happy new year. Welcome to 2019. I'm glad to be able to share uh, something with you at the beginning of the year that I hope will be so inspirational about our past, our past year especially, maybe informational as well uh, to those of you who want to maybe know more about what we've accomplished in the last year, some things to celebrate as I share with you. Uh, my topic today in my time with you here is really just the state of the church. Uh, before we get into all that we're doing in 2019 and all the things that are going to be happening over the next several weeks and the excitement that's a part of that, I want to share with you just a little bit about where we've been in our time together. I'm going to do that. Uh, the band will sing a couple of songs, and then I'm going to share with you some things about the very near future. And, and then after that, I want to share with you some things about some long-term goals that we're trying to accomplish. All of that in my time together here with you today, ringing in the new year, first talking about 2018. You know, before I share with you about 2018, I, I do want to say to you that I'm honored to be your pastor uh, I'm honored to lead this church. Uh, it is the greatest thing of my life when it comes to kingdom work, is leading the local church. I have uh, been blessed to do this now for 12 years, and I consider it nothing but pure joy to be able to do this. And, and 2018 was one of those years, again, that uh, just sparked uh, the hopes and desires inside of me for what we're trying to accomplish in this community, I want to share with you a scripture out of First Peter chapter five, and it talks about my job, my job in leading you. And, and here's what it says: It says, "Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care, watching over them, not because you must, but because you are willing." And I'll stop right there and just say, I don't do this because I must. I do what I do because I am willing. I could do other things, but this is my calling. And so I do it because I am willing uh, and just says as God wants you to be. And I am uh, firmly in that position that I'm willing to do it because God wants me to do it. It is a calling, not pursuing dishonest gain, but eager to serve, not lording over those entrusted to you, but being an example to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. I know that there is a crown of glory waiting in the kingdom work I'm doing. Uh, everybody uh, in this room that serves in the kingdom has opportunities for these crowns of glories. The scripture ta talks about those crowns, and, uh, and that is all a part of what we are part of. And it's really not even about uh, this side of eternity and what we're working towards. And the local church is all about things that will last eternally. Uh, my amazing wife, Sean, and I, we love being a part of this with you. Our staff loves being a part of this with you. We've had, got an amazing staff. Part of 2018 is seeing culmination of even more incredible leaders on our staff, a new executive pastor, uh, Pastor Joe, which is absolutely killing it for us here uh, in the local church already. We're thankful to have him on board as well. I am grateful to work with such amazing people. 2018, this past year though, uh, we saw records broken, which I have to tell you is not uncommon uh, for us every year at our church, seeing records broken over and over and over again. About 1,400 people gave their lives to Jesus Christ last year. 200 baptisms were a part of our 2018 uh, year. I should tell you that I go to events every year where I'm gathered with other churches, and I talk to other churches, and 
Uh, many of them marvel at the amount of baptisms we have. I, I go to one event uh, occasionally, and there'll be other churches there, and maybe two or three hundred churches represented, and they'll go all year without, without even one baptism, maybe zero. Most churches, that's their story. I know what you see at New Walk, and again, sometimes people are new to our church. They think this is normal because they haven't been in church in their past, but I can tell you that what we're doing here at New Walk is abnormal when it comes to things in the kingdom today. Seeing 200 people baptized in one year is pretty incredible. Uh, our church grew year over year. Our Easter was the largest Easter in our history. Almost 7,900 people in attendance. That broke a previous record, broke it significantly. Our Christmas at New Walk was the biggest we have ever had. We talked about how last week 5,900 people were a part of one of our Christmas at New Walk services. Our Christmas offering was the largest in our history. Pretty incredible that you guys took that so seriously and stepped up to make Christmas at New Walk so powerful. I have to tell you, when it comes to the Christmas offering, you know, I, I see the change that's taking place. We've had people baptized now that were a part of Christmas at New Walk. I was, I was uh, able to be, of course, in all the services of uh, teaching. Uh, I heard people weeping as they were dealing with things with God. I heard the weeping in every service, uh, the sounds of snot kind of just coming out nostrils because people are weeping. I got to hear that. Not that that is the indicator of salvation. Snot is not. But I did get to hear people dealing with God one-on-one. -on -one. I met a man after one of our services at Christmas at New Walk uh, whose life uh, was radically changed in that moment at our church. And, uh, and he was talking about how he was surrendering his life to Jesus Christ. And again, uh, Christmas offering makes all of that happen. Of course, the smiles and the joy of the kids playing in the snow, we got to see every bit of that. Our Dominican Republic trip this last year in the summer was our biggest DR trip we've ever had. Uh, something like 23 people joined us on that trip. That's more than double the amount we've ever taken. We'll have another Dominican Republic trip coming in 2019. By the way, if you want to be a part of this year's Dominican Republic trip, see some work in the kingdom that maybe you've never seen happen before in your life, some like real hands-on incredible stuff, you can write DR on the back of your Connect card. Drop it in the offering bucket. Uh, you know, put, maybe make it in big letters, circle it. We'll get you information coming up about our Dominican Republic trip. We're taking more people again, but spots are reserved for that. So we want to uh, start limited for that. So we want to make sure that if you're interested in that, you are letting us know. We have more people serving in our ministry than ever before. Over a thousand people serve here at New Walk Church. It's pretty incredible. They serve regularly. Our student ministry, averaging about 250 teens every night. Guys, there is not a student ministry uh, within 40 minutes of here that is this large and this outreaching like we have here at Newwalk. And when you give here at our church, you're also supporting our student ministry that also launched with our first ever Amplified Conference. Over 300 kids were a part of that. And again, a powerful thing taking place right here in our church. We're going to do that again in 2019. Uh, more people uh, attending our church, I mentioned before, uh, more, more church attendance than ever before in our church of about 15% year over year. Our Celebrate Recovery ministry grew this year and continues to grow every year. Our Monday night CR gatherings. Did you know this, though? That New Walk in our 12-year history has also launched, helped launch directly, send out two churches from our church. And this past Christmas, I found out that Pastor Brent over at Cairo's church had over 400 people in attendance there in only their second Christmas ever, uh, which is phenomenal. Did you know that uh, Pastor Matt, who spoke here earlier this year up at Revelation Church in Connecticut, had 1,800 people in attendance, and I believe it was their fifth ever Christmas service 
amazing what God is doing there in Connecticut. Uh, guys, that's all a part of our 2018 as well, watching other churches that we have been a part of, watching them grow. Guys, it has been an amazing year watching our kids' ministry grow every year, almost uh, every year uh, since we started, but every week this past year, watching it tick up in numbers, more kids coming to our church. I've asked the band to just come back out, sing a couple songs, just celebrating uh, with you guys, and they're going to they're gonna do that, some songs of celebration as we celebrate what God has done in 2018 here at New Walk Church. I'll be back in just a moment. Amen, church. Don't we have an amazing pastor? Man, God has done some amazing things this past year, and he's going to continue to do amazing things. Let's all stand up and continue to worship God for all he's done.
had a great year in 2018. I want to talk to you, though, about 2019. There's a lot at stake, and I want to share with you about uh, really this plan that we've developed uh, that if we would all embrace, we will see incredible growth spiritually uh, and, and growth as a church spiritually if we will just embrace some of the things we're going to be sharing with you, especially the early part of 2019. Before I do that, I want you to know our theme for the year is going to be advancing. And if you are going to advance this year and advance in your spiritual journey as a church, if we're going to advance, we must embrace this principle that is littered throughout the Bible. It's this principle of sowing and reaping, putting in the work on the front end so that we can reap the goodness on the back end. You will not encounter the things of God that God has in store for you until you decide to put the work in on the front end. Something we talk about often because, well, it's in the Bible often. Here's one example in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 9 and verse 6. It says, remember this, this valuable principle, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will reap generously. Uh, that particular text is talking about investing financially in the kingdom. But that is a principle all throughout the scriptures that if you will put it, the work in on the front end, you will discover the generous God that you serve on the back end in so many different ways. Generosity, serving, investing in the kingdom, studying the Word of God, uh, uh, moving in your spiritual journey, pouring in to anything. It doesn't matter in the kingdom. If you'll put the work in, you'll advance. Uh, this is going to be what we'll need to do in the beginning of 2019 and beyond. Uh, we must decide uh, that we want to advance and begin to really put the work in. For many of you, it will be the first time you've ever put the work in in the kingdom like we are talking about uh, so that we can grow spiritually, so that we can discover God's blessings. I, I put in your notes that this year we want to advance personally. We want to advance, so we want to grow personally. In other words, you need to decide this year to become the best you that you can be. And, and so in order to grow personally, there will be some personal investment, some spiritual personal investment. We've got to decide that we want to help others advance as well. And when we become the best us, we can also uh, help others along the way. We want to do that in, in 2019. In 2019, though, we also uh, want to help our church advance. And so when we are doing better personally, helping others as well, our church will advance. Uh, this will be an initiative that we'll actually be dealing with starting next week. But if we are going to go in advance, we, we got to be all in. We, you know, like, I guess cars, you know, can easily go in reverse to get to some place or another. But um, a jet airplane cannot. You know, a jet airplane, uh, in order for it to go, when it's in the air, it does not go in reverse. If it stops or it goes in reverse, the plane is in trouble. And guys, our church is like a plane in the air. Our, our spiritual journey ought to be seen as a plane in the air. Well, we don't want to stop because we'll have, you know, we'll have a problem. We'll miss out. Uh, we don't want to go backwards. Uh, I want to help us as a church fly high, fly forward, not stagnating in our journey spiritually, in our journey as a church, not going backwards. Sadly, I think many people within the sound of my voice have stagnated spiritually. And you have stagnated uh, in your involvement in your local church. And it affects people around you when you do that. Henry Ford once said this, If everyone is moving forward, then success takes care of itself. 
we're moving forward together, we will all together encounter success. Martin Luther King said this, if you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you have got to keep moving forward. And so we want to advance what God is doing here in the local church. We want to advance what God is doing personally. But don't forget, you have an enemy of your soul that wants to stagnate you. Uh, he wants to hold you back. He wants to stand against you. And it will be very easy uh, to let the enemy take hold like he has done. Uh, unfortunately, for many people watching this, uh, the enemy uh, has gotten into you. You know, you, you had a bad month or a bad week or even a bad year. At least it's the thinking that you have, or maybe it's very real. And the enemy speaks and says, don't do anything further. Stay where you are. Stay stagnated. Go backwards. We buy into that, and we miss out on the reaping because we are no longer sowing. So many people, so many Christians are no longer sowing. And so then they are no longer reaping. God wants us to grow. God wants us to go, to keep advancing, to keep flying. He wants us to do it personally, and he wants us to do it as a local church. You know, in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 27, it says that God made man in his image. And a part of what that means for us is that we are to be God's image bearers here on earth. We are to do the work of God here on earth, to reflect God here on earth. And one of the ways that God has entrusted believers is that while we're alive here on earth, we would partner with God and fulfill his plan here on the earth. The Bible says that God wants to uh, join in with you and I for this journey. He wants to partner with us. He wants to, uh, more importantly, us partner with him. Uh, he's seeking us along the way to have this journey going forward in our lives. Whenever that moment happens, we connect with him, and now we are partnering with him, and we're moving forward uh, together. And, and part of the beauty of the local church is that together we can advance the kingdom, but in order for us to advance the kingdom here on earth as believers, uh, you must be involved in the things that God cares about in the kingdom. God cares about eternal things, uh, things like love, things like kindness, things like serving the kingdom of God, things like uh, sowing God's word into your heart uh, more deeply. These are things that are eternal, and God wants us to be involved in things of the eternal. Uh, sadly, too many people are involved in things that are not eternal things of the world, things that hold them back. I wrote this down in my notes, though. God always blesses the things that are done that are eternal. That's where God puts his blessing on. And you will not find a blessing in your life until you decide to invest in eternal things. That's what God wants. He made us in his image, and God wants us to do the work of the eternal, the things in his image. God does want to bless us, but you are not entitled to God's blessing just because you have become a believer when it comes to the things here of this earth. You become a believer, you're entitled to eternity, but if you want the blessings of God on your life while you're still drawing air in your lungs, you must decide again to sow so that you can reap. I think too many believers uh, just expect to be entitled. And they have a bad week or they have a bad month or they fall prey to the enemy and they don't see uh, that they haven't decided to sow into the kingdom, sow eternal things. They've stopped doing that. They've gotten stagnant. They're going backwards. God does want to bless, but he blesses at the level of eternal sowing, eternal investment on our part. If I was a parent, uh, looking to leave inheritance to my children. I am going to be looking to leave an inheritance to children that are invested in the things of our family, the beliefs of our family, the core values of our family. Uh, am I going to want to leave an inheritance maybe to a child 
who's against uh, the things that we desire as a family, who's not involved in the things that we desire as a family. Quite possibly, I'm not going to be interested in leaving an inheritance, trusting uh, a child with an inheritance to do things opposite of the things that we stand for as a family. Well, the same is true in the kingdom of God. God wants to show you the things of the inheritance here on this side of eternity, but he shows them to the people who are involved in the family work, the family business. And God has given us an incredible family business here, Newark Church. God has chosen those of you who are believers to be a part of something so special. But this year, I need you to be embracing this principle that there is a value to growing. There is a value to growing and being planted here in the house of God, to being connected, growing personally, growing relationally with other believers, caring about seeing the kingdom grow. But I can promise you that as you personally invest in advancing those areas around you and in your life, you will discover more, more richly, the blessings that God wants to show you. But your role is important. I can remember uh, a story about a band conductor who um, was conducting a large orchestra and choir. Many, 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 many pieces were in the orchestra and the choir. And there was a guy in the back. He was playing the piccolo. And he thought, you know what? Pfft, who cares about the piccolo? You know, I mean, there's so many other instruments going on. There's so many other people singing and doing stuff. If I take time off, playing the piccolo. Nobody will notice. So they're doing, they're working, they're doing their rehearsals, and all of a sudden, the conductor stops and says, hey, where's the piccolo? What happened to the piccolo? And the piccolo player says, I stopped playing, and the conductor says, yeah, I, I noticed. I want to say to you that when you stop advancing, when you stop doing the work of the kingdom, when you stop growing personally, growing in the local church, it is noticed. Your part matters. What you're doing in the kingdom matters. And we got to decide that we all want to be a part of something greater than ourselves and grow together in 2019. I want to share with you real quick some short-term goals uh, that we have this coming year. Uh, next weekend, it really all begins. And I want to challenge you to be here next weekend and every weekend beyond where you can possibly be because we're going to be downloading this growth information, this advancing information next year, next week on the 12th and the 13th of January. We are kicking off this year-long initiative to grow and advance like we have kind of been talking about already. Our church is going to kick off a series. It's called, it's called Quit Church. I'm quitting church. I quit church. I'm going to quit church because I want to be the church. Stop going to church and start being the church. That's what we're going to kick off next week. Uh, I want us to stop playing the game of just attending church and start being the church. I know many of you are being the church. Uh, probably a chunk of our church has figured out how to engage, and I am so thankful. But what would it look like if another thousand people in our church 1,500 decided they were going to quit just going to church and be the church. And what would it look like if this next year we engaged in that fully together? And we're going to kick off that initiative next week and make sure you're here. On the 12th and the 13th, uh, that kicks off. And the week right after that, the 19th and 20th, we are doing a chili cook-off. This is going to be led by our group system, our group leaders. They're going to be there. They're going to be talking about their groups. They're going to be cooking chili. There's going to be contests. It's going to be happening Saturday and Sunday. Uh, so don't forget to be a part of those, the chili cook-off. I want to invite you to be a part of it okay, by tasting, by by sampling the food or just enjoying some of the, the cooked chili that we're going to have. Again, that's the second week of our initiative. That's two weeks from now. Next weekend, kicking off the following weekend, the chili cook-off. Don't forget, in the middle of that, those first two weeks, we'll be in the first two weeks of our five services. You know that uh, starting next week, we are kicking off our fifth service. So we'll have two on Saturday night 
and 3 on Sunday. We're tweaking all the times, 5 o'clock and 6.30 on Saturday night. And then on Sundays, uh, we will begin our first ever 8.30 service, 9.45 service. And then we'll move on to the 11 15 service. Uh, this will be an exciting time for us so by having five services beginning next week, uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing how these next couple weeks play out as we are launching our five services. Three weeks from now, we will begin our small group round. I'm excited because this is all a part of our 2019 initiative to advance. If you've been at our church last year, you know that last year we stopped doing groups in the last part of 2018. We sort of regrouped, I guess you would say, and we gathered and we had five weeks of training for groups, leaders and co-leaders and helpers in our group system. And all of that saw about 180 people in our church go through that training. Well, guess what? We said we would launch in 2019 with more group leaders, more groups, and more people in groups than ever before, and that is going to happen. Something like 67 connection group, connect groups are going to take place in our groups. Our old terminology was connect groups. We're just going to move forward and call them groups going forward, but we're going to have 60 Seven. We have never even come close to that number before, but we're expecting that you will take your spiritual advancing seriously by being a part of our group's system, by being a part of one of our groups. I'm going to ask you to take that very seriously and be a part of it. And don't forget, uh, this year in 2019, we are launching our Women's Wild at Heart trip. It's going to be incredible. We are going to send some ladies on a trip uh, so that they can grow. It, it's not called Women's Wild at Heart, uh, but it's something like that. Our women's trip happening the beginning of May. Uh, Sign-ups for that are going to be opened up very shortly. We'll tell you about that. Opportunities for ladies to go and be a part of that trip. That's the women's trip the beginning of May. Something else that's coming in 2019 is uh, a more significant push for us to do more online work. You know, something that has been happening is uh, you're seeing our Facebook Live audiences grow uh, around the country and even in different places in the world. Uh, we're creating some platforms and some ways to grow that uh, because that audience is getting larger and larger. We still believe 100%, of course, 150%, that being shoulder to shoulder in the local church is where it's at. There is zero substitute for that by watching online. However, when people are home, sick, traveling, we want to enhance those options for people to connect. So we'll be having more of that in 2019. Also, something that will be announced uh, this year is that in 2021, uh, we are going to take a trip to Israel as a church. Uh, we'll announce that this year uh, so that you'll have a couple of years to prepare for this. For those of you that want to go, uh, we think we'll be able to take maybe 40 or so people on this trip, so it'll be limited. Uh, it's not a cheap endeavor, but at the same time, it's exciting. If you're having an interest in that, we'll be announcing that uh, this coming year as well. Wow, what, like, these are some pretty incredible things coming up this year, all centered around the opportunities to advance in the kingdom, advance personally, spiritually. I'm going to come back and share with you some last thoughts about bigger initiatives that we're trying to accomplish as a church, but I'm going to hand things over to the band again as they play another song. Church, would you stand with us as we sing? This song is called God of the Promise. We're going to worship Him for what He's going to do in our church in 2019, the promises that He is making our church. Let's sing this and declare it this morning.
last thing I want to share with you before we finish up. Uh, Newark Church, uh, it has been a great 12 years, but we uh, see our role here in a growing part of East Pasco uh, as a role for us as a church to continue to grow and to meet the needs of this growing community. Uh, if you look all around in all, all directions um, here from where we're located, you see growth, houses going up everywhere. And uh, we happen to be the church that East Pasco, uh, that God has trusted to reach East Pasco. Uh, and so we're going to continue uh, to seek ways to grow. And I can tell you, uh, I can kind of let the cat out of the bag just a little bit, that we are engaged in multiple feasibility studies to figure out opportunities for us to continue to grow. Uh, I don't want to share with you at the moment what that looks like because it, it's all um, kind of up in the air, these studies, you know, to find out whether we can do certain things or not. Uh, an expansion uh, of this facility or uh, an expansion in other locations, whatever that may look like, uh, we're not even sure yet. But it is our desire that in uh, 2019, we would be able to come to the conclusion about some next steps for us as a church. Uh, what will we do to continue to maximize, leverage our positioning here in this community to reach even more people? And we're seeing a need for that in different ways all across this building already as we're hitting maximization points in various places and at various times. And so trying to get ahead of that, uh, almost even one could say we're a little behind at this point, trying to stay ahead of the curve of growth, things that are coming. We are taking that initiative right now. It is happening, and I'm excited to maybe sometime during 2019 be able to share with you what that advancement in the kingdom here at our local church will look like as we try to reach even more people here in East Pasco. Folks, that is a great thing to think that, man, this is the church that God is entrusting in a huge way uh, to reach so many people in our area. It has been an incredible run. I'm looking forward to what God has in store for us. I and our staff, uh, we have been working on preparing for this coming year, and we have been praying, I have been praying that you will take the initiative, that you will sow, that you will advance, that you will grow, put the work in so that you can discover God in a very real way, discover his blessings. I can promise you that the blessings that God wants you to discover are amazing, but they will only happen if you seek him deeply in your life and for the kingdom of God. He will begin to show you even more richly the blessings that he has for people who care about the things that are eternal. I want to close in prayer and uh, pray us out as a church as we get ready uh, for this coming year. The band uh, will uh, sing sort of a reprise uh, and then uh, we'll close out the service. But I want to pray this uh, with you now. If you would bow your heads, close your eyes. God, we, we just want to take time to have an attitude of gratitude and thanksgiving. The 12 years of this church and 2018 have been amazing. We celebrate the incredible things that have happened, yet believing even more is coming. Even greater things are still to come. God, we believe as a church that you are positioning us to do mighty, powerful things. But in order for us to be moving ahead, we have to individually care about growing. And we can do a lot together. We can advance the cause together if we are all individually growing, if we're personally taking our steps. My charge to our church is to desire to take these steps. Greater things are coming. Bigger things are coming. God, we want to be a part of it. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks, church. Thanks for watching. Church, would you stand up as we sing this again? We're going to sing the end of that song. The gates of hell will never stand a chance. They won't stand a chance against the promise that God has made for us. Let's sing this out.
love God's promises. They are awesome. You guys can just be seated as we come to the end of our time together. Just a few more things to wrap up with you. First of all, for those of you who are here for the first time, know that we normally have a live six foot three version of Pastor Gary on the stage, not an 18 foot video version. He'll be back next week, but even so, how exciting it is to celebrate and just see the movement of God in this community and, and through our, our church. It's such a privilege to be part of this. I'm so glad my family is part of this alongside all of you. I'm also so grateful that Pastor Gary and his awesome wife, Sean, they answered that call on their life from God to get all of this rolling just over 12 years ago. It's awesome, awesome, awesome. Now, one thing that Gary said that I agree so much with, and I said so many great things, is that we cannot be still. We need to keep pushing and keep rolling and investing and continue to sow. Because I, I think God is just getting started. This is not the conclusion of anything. And for us to continue that way, that means we're gonna have to ask ourselves some questions, some questions that only we can answer for ourselves. And some of these are hard questions. They're what's next questions. So what is your next step? Maybe your next step is simply to accept Jesus as your savior and to get baptized. Well, you know what? We had hundreds of people in the last two weeks who made that really important decision. Today, you wanna to make that decision right out to the left as you go out of the auditorium, our prayer team is out there. They would love to talk with you about it and pray with you about that or anything else going on in your life. But maybe your next step is to go ahead and begin investing in God's word and studying it and making it a priority intentionally in your life. And in tandem with that, getting into biblical community in a, in a group, in a small group. Really, as I think back to the early church and reading in, in God's word, I believe a lot of what that looked like was in small groups of people coming together, breaking bread together, praying together, studying God's word together, being there in support of each other. Well, this weekend, we start that kickoff. As you heard Pastor Gary say, if you're not in a group, take some time today. Go by our Connect area and find a group and sign up. If today's not the day for you to do that, here's what I would ask you to do. Just pray about it. Ask God to put on your heart where you should go for your next step. And what group is God leading you to? For others of you, maybe your next step is to begin serving. You know, Pastor Gary said that we have about a thousand people who serve and really keep this place rolling. Here's what I'm gonna tell you. He's right, but that's not enough. I think as we continue to go and continue to grow, we're gonna need more. So if you haven't engaged in serving here at church, in your community and around the world, maybe it's time for you to raise your hand and say, put me in, coach. You know, as February starts, we're gonna have boot camps, which is a great place to begin to learn a little more about the church and figure out your place to serve. You know, for others of you, maybe your next step is to begin to really look around in your network of friends and family and neighbors and, and start inviting people to come to their local church if they don't have a local church. We're gonna help with that. We're gonna do things like we're gonna do next weekend where we're gonna have mega bounce houses here. Why do we do things like mega bounce houses? Because they're a great way to encourage people who don't have a church to come try and check it out. And here's the other reason we do them, because they're fun. So we're gonna have fun. You know what else we're gonna do? We're gonna get fed spiritually next weekend. And so will anyone who you invite to church. Well, maybe one, one other thing that is your next step, and I know this may be the next step for a lot of us, and that's to begin to give generously. I know that's a tough one for some of us. We're willing to say, God, you can have my time. You can have my talent. But God, my treasure, that's a little bit harder. I feel your pain. This was one that I struggled with for years. Here's what I promise you. Once we are able to surrender that, the blessings in our life that God provides are amazing. And I don't mean financial blessings, better blessings than financial blessings. So right now, our ushers are gonna come through the room and they're gonna help us as we, we go into a time of offering and giving. Um, before they do that, I'd love to stop and pray for this time. So let's pray together, church. Lord God, 
we just come before you with grateful hearts. Father, we're grateful for your work in this church, your movement.